Hello friends and welcome back to She's in Her Apron. I am so glad you're joining me today because I'm in my apron in my kitchen working on some back to school breakfasts, lunches, some snacks, after school snacks, and I'm taking you with me. So I do this every year. I take you guys along as I get ready for back to school and preparing some make ahead things is my jam. I do it every year. My kids are pretty independent. We all have crazy busy schedules just like you guys. The mornings are bananas, right? So I like to do this, make some make ahead meals and freezer meals um, ahead of time. That way it makes the mornings go smoother. So I do this every school year and I love taking you along. Yesterday I started this process. Right now I'm working on some breakfast burritos. So let, let me take you to yesterday. If you wanna join me, come along. Aprons on, let's go. All right, we're gonna start on some hoagie sandwiches to prepare and put in the freezer. So from Costco, I have this big bag of hoagie rolls and we're gonna use all of them. Now this is something that I do periodically during the school year, is I'll make up a bunch of sandwiches, put them in the freezer, and then the kids can take them out the night before or the morning of and just throw it in their bag for lunch and it thaws out in time for lunch. But we've never had an issue. My kids never bit into um, a frozen sandwich. So I have some ham from Costco. This is their uncured extra lean ham. My kids really enjoy it. They also like the lunch meat from Sam's Club. And I have some salamis. I did buy an organic salami from Costco. This one right here. Um, <laughs> Jonah did not like it. He's like, there's a weird aftertaste. So I'm like, I will eat this, that's fine. So we're going to make ham and salami sandwiches without the cheese. They haven't been fans of cheese in their sandwich for a while. We do both Miracle Whip and Mayo, but we're gonna do Miracle Whip. And some of this original from Bino submarine dressing. This makes your sandwiches taste so good. And of course, mustard. The key to this though is you put your meat in first then your mayo and mustard, or the mayo and everything will get your sandwich really soggy. If you're gonna freeze peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you will um, put peanut butter on both sides of your bread and then the jelly in the middle. That way that jelly doesn't sog up your bread as well. Now I get asked all the time, what is the difference? Are you just being lazy, not making your kids sandwiches in the morning? They could get up and make their sandwiches, but if I can help them with, you know, this step, all they have to do is make their lunch, get out the door. Okay, now is the layer of the condiments, and then I'll put the salami on, and then bag these up. What's great about having sandwiches like this in your freezer is if you are going to take a weekend to go somewhere to the lake or go out for a walk or a hike or something, you don't have to make your sandwiches. You've got them already in the freezer ready to go. It's great. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them in the baggies and then put them back in this bag and stick this whole bag full of sandwiches already made in the freezer. Do you guys remember from my videos years ago where I had to cut the sandwiches a certain way? The ones that did have mustard and the ones that didn't have mustard? Who remembers that? Leave a comment below if you remember that. And there you go, so you can do it all whole or just cut in half. So now I'm gonna get this in the freezer. This will last the first week, I don't know, week and a half, maybe two. It depends if they decide they want something else for lunch. This is why I am periodically doing this through the school year because this will only last about a week or so. So 
All right, I'm gonna get this in the freezer. All right, I'm gonna make some pancakes, but I'm gonna do them a little differently. And Derek's really excited about this. So I have these sausage links and they are from Jimmy Dean. I got them at, I want to say Sam's Club. Yes, Sam's Club. And they're already cooked and everything and I thought, let's do pancakes with some sausage bites inside. So what I'm gonna do is just slice these links up, like this thickness, and then we'll make the, we'll put it in the pancake batter, and then you can have a sausage pancake. So instead of like making sausage in the morning with your pancakes, it's already done. And I'm thinking, man, do I make some bacon pancakes too? It's all done in one go. So I'm gonna slice all these up, and then I'll get going on the pancake mix. Okay, my griddle seems to be good and hot. I'm just doing the Christie's pancake mix for the kids, but I do wanna try the sausage with the gluten-free pancake mix that I have. I'm gonna try one with this and have everyone taste it and tell me what they think before I do a whole batch with their mix. Okay, I'm gonna put a little batter into this measuring cup and I'm gonna drop some in. And then pick some more up. <laughs> and then pour it onto the griddle. I don't know if that will work or not. Yeah, it kinda did. I have this yummy paleo gluten-free um, pancake and waffle mix. So I definitely wanna make some, for me, I know I'm gonna love it, uh, but my kids are funny. Some things I think they're gonna absolutely love, they don't. When you open it, you can see the, uh, oh, there's some right there, the sausage. Ooh, yummy. What do you think of the sausage and the pancake together? Tastes like old pancakes. <laughs> so is that a no for you? No. You don't like it? Okay. Shaylee is a no. Now I'm gonna try it on the boys. I want you to try this pancake. It has a sausage in it. Tell me if you like it. Kinda. It tastes like a sausage pancake. You're a go if I make some of these. Will you eat them in the morning? With the sausage in them? Hmm? Yeah. Hurry. Yeah? All right, you're a go. Okay, Derek's a go. And now I just gotta try Jonah. So I'm gonna make some with the Christie's pancake mix and then definitely some with this for Derek and I. Here we have them. These are the Christie's ones for the kids. Uh, my nephew tried them and he loved it. Jonah is still iffy on them. Next, I'm going to make some with this mix for Derek and I, and um, then I'll show you getting them all prepared for the freezer. With the paleo pancakes, I am gonna put this down on the tray because it creates condensation from the moisture of the pancake. So we'll just start laying them on here and then they don't collect all that water from the steam. So I think I'll go ahead and do that. And I think that's a good idea for if you do waffles to keep them crispier. So I'm gonna do that. All right, I'm gonna get going on those pancakes and I'll show you when I'm done. All right, I got the sausage pancakes in a freezable baggie. I'm gonna put this in the fridge. Oh, not fridge, the freezer. <laughs> and they'll be ready for them in like about a week and a half when school starts. And then I've been doing the pancakes, the paleo ones. I'm not doing very many. This is all that I'm doing. I used up the rest of the sausage. Um, I'll just put this in the refrigerator for Derek and I for the week and we'll eat it up. All right, I have some big white Franz bread that I snagged at, I want to say Sam's Club. So I got two of these, because we are going to make 
French toast. I love doing this. So we're gonna use all the bread and then I'm gonna put it back in here and freeze it for uh, make ahead French toast. So you could put this in the microwave in the morning or you could just stick it in the toaster. Either way, it works really good. All right, I am gonna start preparing, get the eggs and the cinnamon and all the seasonings and let's make some French toast. I'll start with 10 eggs. So I'm not even going to measure for the cinnamon. We just add, can't go wrong with cinnamon. And then I'm gonna add some nutmeg. And then a splash of vanilla, or two or three, or four or five or six. <laughs> love French toast, but I don't like making it all the time. How do you make your French toast? What do you put in yours? I would love to know. I whipped up some more eggs, another 10, with all the seasonings. I'm putting more cinnamon in this one though. Would you look at that? Look how good those look. It looks so good. Okay, they completely cooled. So I'm gonna get them in the baggies, and the, the bags that they came in, wrap them up and put them in the freezer. Oh, they smell so good. Usually when I make this and put it back in the bag, they don't fit like they used to because they're thicker, obviously, from you know the eggs and everything. Got the two bags. I'm just gonna get the tie on and get these in the freezer. This can last, I notice, up to a month in my freezer. Breakfast foods are always a hit no matter what time of the day, not just in the mornings. Okay, French toast, all done, going in the freezer. I love French toast. French toast is so scrumptious. I love it with powdered sugar. My kids love the powdered sugar. And syrup. My kids go through a lot of syrup. With pancakes, French toast, do your kids? Let me know. Jonah discovered a few years ago that he really likes the maple syrup with his eggs. And he'll even put maple syrup on eggs. What are some of the things that your kids love in the morning for breakfast besides cereal? I mean, kids love cereal. But what do they usually gravitate towards? I would love to know. We do love making oatmeal and my kids will be on an oatmeal kick and then they're not on an oatmeal kick. Um, but I love oatmeal. I enjoy it so much. I love doing it in the slow cooker overnight. I've shared overnight oats with you guys. I love their stuff. Um, I do have a link. I'll leave that below for you. We love oatmeal. We love the eggs. Eggs are huge here. We go through a ton. If you are new here, I share shopping hauls and I share how I buy like the five dozen eggs all the time because we crank through them. But yeah, what do you have the majority of the time? I would love to know what you have for breakfast. Okay, I'm starting on the breakfast burritos and I have this big Jimmy Dean pork sausage. Um, it was in my freezer all frozen. It sat in the fridge for a few days, so it's nice and thawed. 
and we're going to brown it all up. If I don't use it all up in the breakfast burritos, I have other things I wanna use it for. So let's get going on browning this. While that is going, I'm going to start on the scrambled eggs for the burritos. I have um, a big carton of eggs here I'm working with. So I'm gonna grab a bowl. I'm just gonna start cracking eggs in and then I'll add some salt and pepper and some milk and we'll get them cooking up in here. I don't even know how many eggs I'm gonna do. I just make eggs. And then whatever is left and how many burritos I can get out of everything, great. Grab some more eggs and I think I'll do 20. some butter to this we'll get that melted and spread around this pan now I'm gonna pour the egg mixture in we'll let that just sit for like one minute and I'm gonna go check on the sausage brown it up beautifully Smells so good. All right, they're at a good state. They still have some cooking through, but I'm just gonna turn this off and they will finish on their own and I'm gonna go back to the sausage. Almost there, not quite. I've been cooking this slower than usual because I just don't wanna burn it. While that is finishing, let's shred some cheese. I have a little bit of cheese left here and then I have a whole other brick right here and I'm just gonna get shredding and maybe I'll do it in a bowl. <laughs> I think last year when I made this with you guys, I forgot to add the cheese in them. There was one year, I don't remember, but got the cheese this time. Okay, I have my Ziploc bag ready. I could put it in a container, but I am running low on room in my freezer, so we're gonna do this. And I have some saran wrap to wrap them in. And then I have my eggs here, my cheese, my sausage, and then my flour tortillas. And I get asked every year when I make these, how do you reheat them when they're frozen? Well, I take them out of the saran wrap, and then um, we wrap them in like a paper towel, and we do 30 seconds, and then if it needs another 30 seconds, another 30 seconds, and the moisture goes into the paper towel and we're good to go. Kids love them. This one is the big, big hit with all my make ahead. So let's just start assembling. We're gonna need, of course, the egg. I might have to make more eggs. <laughs> I might have to. <laughs> And I always make them too big and then I gotta scale them down. I never know how to gauge them. <laughs> Over. I got little Miss Paige next to me waiting patiently for me to drop something. 
And then there's times I add both sausage and bacon. This year I'm just gonna do sausage. protects them. I've then seen people wrap them in, in aluminum foil, but I don't do that. They do very well with the saran wrap. The little cutting thing is off on it. So I just do, do it like this. Get it in here. These are always a hit. And they get eaten fast. Okay, I was able to get 22 breakfast burritos. This is how much cheese I have left, and the sausage, and the eggs are gone. So we did good, and I used up all the flour tortillas. So 22, ready to go. The kids came down like bugging me for some. <laughs> <laughs> they are excited about these. Well, how do you make your breakfast burritos? Now, I know you can add potatoes and a whole bunch of stuff, and I've done that before with my kids, but they honestly like it plain with either just bacon and sausage and eggs and cheese. Like, they are not down with the potatoes. I've done it with tater tots, uh, shredded potatoes, and they're not big fans. Leave in the comments below, how do you make your breakfast burritos? I would love to see. I think I'm gonna make some blueberry muffins. I have the box kind instead of doing it from scratch. I always make them for the first day of school. Um, my blueberry muffin recipe from scratch. I found it on Pinterest forever ago. I've shared it with you. I'll leave the video down below. But I'm going to make some of these and then we can freeze them and then we could just take them out. They thaw super fast. I am doing the wild blueberry from Betty Crocker. I actually have a video where we tested out a bunch of muffin uh, boxes and we did, oh my gosh, you're gonna have to check into that video. I don't know how many pre-made like muffin boxes like this, but Betty Crocker won. And I believe they came in very close. Um, but this is the gluten-free wild blueberry from Christie's and it is yummy. So I'm gonna be making some of these and marking the bag for gluten-free and then the wild blueberry.
I have some blueberry muffins are ready for the freezer. I labeled the bags gluten free and so I know which ones are which. Any muffin recipe I'll also leave down below for you guys. And since fall is right around the corner, I do have a video that I did last year for you guys where I did a ton of fall baking. I baked a ton of bread. It was zucchini breads and spice breads and pumpkin breads and carrot breads. So if you would like to see that, that is also down below for you. Okay, next we're gonna make some bagel bite pizzas. Mini bagel pizzas, basically. So I have two bags of bagels here I need to use up. I have some pepperoni left in this bag a jar of sauce, and of course mozzarella cheese. You could do this with any other toppings. You know, you could add um, onions and peppers and sausage, but my kids just like the pepperoni kind, so that's what we're gonna make right now. And I have shared this over the years, but it's so simple, but so good, and it makes such a great after-school snack. And these are a great way to use up bagels if your kids aren't going through them fast enough. Sometimes they go on a kick and they eat all the bagels and they don't even last two days. And then there's times like right now where they are like meh. And so when they said, you're gonna make the bagel pizzas, right? And I was like, of course, they got super excited. So when I notice that they're gonna be walking through the house quick after school, if I notice the clock, I will take them out of the freezer and get them in the oven. So when they walk in, they have a yummy after school snack. If you homeschool, or on the weekends, this is a great lunch. Pair it with a vegetable. They're happy campers. That's as much as I could fit on this sheet and I'll start putting the sauce on. And I do kind of put a lot on because it soaks into the bagel. top shelf in my freezer, get them individually frozen, and then we'll pack them away. All right, the um, bagel bites, pizza bites, were in the freezer for probably about an hour, so I'm gonna put them in this container. Now your cheese and your pepperoni, it will fall off, it's just how it is. Um, my kids are used to this, they just sprinkle it on, and um, it, it works fine. So, I'm just gonna layer it in as best as I can. You bake them at 375 degrees, 15 or so minutes. Um, just check them. But these are a hit with my kids. Cover on and we've got pizza bites. If you haven't tried them, try them. Basic, but so yummy. Well friends, thank you so much for joining me. I know it's pretty basic and simple, but that's what I do really quick. That's what I know, that's what the kids love and I can crank it out really fast and get it done. I have some really fun videos coming up for you guys. I have some after school snacks and charcuterie boards. The recipes are so fun. I encourage you to get in your kitchens and prepare something ahead of time right now for back to school. Getting into a routine, it, it could be tiring. It could, it could take a while. It could take up to like a couple of weeks to get into the flow of things. So why not save some time in the mornings and uh, start preparing some things now. I love doing this. It really helps during that whole like two week uh, adjustment period after the summer going back to school. All right, friends, thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you soon, bye.